We are continuing on in our forces unit. Today we're going to look at some applications of, of Newton's second law and look at the types of problems that we can solve. So, let's pretend we're in an elevator or on a platform. We're standing here. I'm going to say that one person is 80 kilograms. What we're going to do is, in the elevator, look at some different things. First off, let's start off with a zero acceleration. So look at what happens with an acceleration that equals zero for the elevator. So, let's take our person and draw a free body diagram. Free body diagram, let's write that up right here. Free body diagram. diagram of forces. We just want the forces that are acting on an object. Free body diagram is a way to do that, but it's on one object. Okay, so for this 80 kilogram person we know that there will always, always, always be weight force of gravity is always pulling down on that person. So it's going to be his mass, 80 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, 10. We get 800 newtons. Standing in the elevator, though, we also get the normal force. Now, if the acceleration is zero, that tells me the sum of my forces has to equal zero. I know the sum of my forces is mass times acceleration. That has to equal zero. So the normal force minus the weight has to be equal to zero. This is up so it's positive, down so it's negative, at least for right now. So that tells me the normal force is equal to the weight, or that normal force, the force of the elevator pushing up on the guy, is equal to 800 newtons. That's a really simple case. What we're going to do now is change all that. So instead of the acceleration being equal to zero, our acceleration is going to equal, let's say, five meters per second squared in the upward direction. To do that, <clears throat> we're here. We have our normal force up, our weight down, and our acceleration is up. Now, if our acceleration is up, that means I have to have a net force that is in the upward direction. Just looking at this, because the acceleration is up, we know that the normal force should be bigger than the weight. Because the acceleration is up, I have to have more force pointing up than I did before. So let's take this. We still have our weight of 800 newtons. We have our upwardly directed normal force and our acceleration that's up. So the sum of my forces I know is going to be the normal force minus 800 newtons. Again, that's up, that's down, positive and negative. I also know that the sum of my forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So. 80 times 5 is equal to the normal force minus 800. That's 400 equals the normal force minus 800. And in this case, the normal force comes out to be 1,200 newtons. That is bigger than the weight. That's what we wanted. That's what we were after. Last, last case that we're going to do with this no, I don't want to erase it all. The last thing that we're going to do with this is take and flip over the direction of our acceleration. Now it's going to be 5 meters per second squared, but it's down. So over here, let's look at 5 meters per second squared down. We have our guy. We have the weight, mg, that's 800. <clears throat> we have the normal force which is up and our acceleration which is down 800 newtons. So we're going to go through this again in the same way. 
the sum of my forces equals well, my acceleration is down now what we're going to do is every time we write out ma we're going to assume that the acceleration is positive that means that whatever's with the acceleration is positive, whatever's against it is negative. I know it sounds weird, but that's how we're going to have to do things. It just makes a view or making some noises in the back. Oh, are you recording? Yeah, the whole thing. Thanks. Thanks. You got to remember where I am now, though. Okay, so sum of our forces is MA. We have to actually sum up those forces now. So that's going to be 800 minus the normal force in this case. Um, and again, that's because 800 is down, the acceleration is down. We need to leave both of those positive, make the one that's up negative. It's counterintuitive, but it works out better. 800 minus the normal force is equal to mass times acceleration, um, five kilo, 80 kilograms times 5 meters per second squared, 400 newtons. In, in this case, the normal force is going to be 800 minus 400 or 400 newtons. And this is what we expect. When we're accelerating down, we want the normal force to be lighter than it is. The question that, you're going to see a question on this in class tomorrow. It's going to have an object hanging from the top. Instead of the normal force, you're going to have tension. That's, that's all that's different about it. Um, this is one type of problem. It's just a really easy application of Newton's laws. Um, there's some tricky stuff with signs in these, in these equations. Uh, but it's not so bad. The next thing that we're going to look at is coupled motion. Essentially tying two objects together and seeing what happens. Okay, so for these coupled motion problems, oh, that's not the right pin. For these coupled motion problems, uh, we're going to have a mass, mass one, it's attached by a pulley to mass 2. But the whole system is going to have uh, the same acceleration. And this is sensible. Objects that are tied together objects tied together have the same acceleration. If I tie a bike onto my car, car accelerates at 5 meters per second squared. Turns out the bike does it as well. So, for these coupled motion problems, and I'm going to show you two ways to do it. The easy way and the hard way. We'll do the easy way second. What we have to do, and I'm going to go ahead and do numbers, just because numbers kind of help out a little bit. Um, yeah. So we're going to say M1 is one kilogram, M2 is two kilograms. Doesn't matter if they are, but that helps. So for mass one, we have its weight, M1g, we have the normal force, and we have tension pulling it forward. For mass two, we have that same tension because it's the same string pulling up, and mass 2g pulling down. So the hard way says, all right, we take the first one. I know M1G equals the normal force because they're not accelerating in that direction. I'm going to say, all right, the sum of my forces in the x direction equals mass 1 times the acceleration. And that's equal to tension. That's all we have. Then we look at the same thing over here. Acceleration is down. Sum of my forces for that one are mass 2 times the acceleration. So I make that positive, I make that positive, make that negative. So when I add these two forces, I've got M2G minus tension. And I want to solve for the acceleration. Uh, mathematically, what we're going to do is add these two equations together. M1A plus M2A, they're the same acceleration, equals M2G minus T plus T. Fun when math works out, our t's go away. I've got m1 plus m2 times a equals m2g. My acceleration is m2g over m1 plus 
M2, plug our numbers in. Oh, what do we got? About 20 over 3. It's not a great number. Uh, 6.67 meters per second squared. That's the hard way because we're creating these equations. Um, the easy way that I'd like to show you is we take this situation and we've got uh, the one kilogram with mg down the normal force up and it's attached to the two kilogram object with m2g pulling this way, tension pulling in those directions. All we've done is straighten this situation out, change the direction so that everything's all in a line. Now we know that these two guys cancel out. So what we're going to do is combine these two masses, three kilograms, and really the only, the net force, when we add these two together, they cross out, and the only outside force I have acting on this whole system is M2G. So if we do Newton's second law, mass times acceleration is equal to the sum of my forces. Well, the whole mass here is m1 plus m2, 3, times the acceleration is equal to the sum of my forces. The only thing left over is m2g, which is 20. 3a equals 20. a equals 6.67 meters per second squared. We will have plenty of opportunity to practice this. I will make this as complicated as I think I can before adding in friction, which we'll do next week.